What's up YouTube, my name is Aaron and today I'm going to review the new Marshall Major 3 Bluetooth headphones. Retails for $289 Singapore dollars in stores and $149 US dollars on Marshall's website. Now some of you have requested I do a comparison video between the Major 3 Bluetooth and the other Marshall headphones like the Mid Bluetooth and the Monitor Bluetooth. So yes, I will be doing it today. You're welcome. But our SOP still applies on this channel, let's unbox this thing first. So let's take a look at what's inside the box with a micro USB to USB cable. Marshall's iconic 3.5mm cable with a spring coil and an inline microphone which has a button that controls your music as well as answering your phone calls. A user manual that now has a few changes compared to the previous model, the Major 2 Bluetooth, such as black pages and a fold out in front that shows you the control schemes, etc. And there's something new here which I haven't seen with other Marshall headphones. This appears to be a pamphlet with some legal warnings as related to uh, copyright infringement and intellectual property. Now, if the criminals were to make fake Major 3 headphones, which I suspect they are already doing, we can expect them to copy this booklet as well. It's pretty hilarious that Marshall or Zound Industries which designs these headphones haven't taken any concrete steps towards ensuring that the headphones cannot be copied. Rather, they print this kind of booklets and expect people not to copy the headphones, which is kind of gullible. So let's take a look at the headphones and... <sighs> Still smells fresh. I have to say that this feels a lot better than the previous version. The metal frame, for instance, is a lot thicker than the previous model. It feels a lot stiffer, it doesn't feel like it would bend easily. And as with the previous model, they have hinges that lock the ear cups into place when you fold them out. I also noticed that the hinges are a lot better built this time round as compared to the previous model. They feel a lot more durable, they are thicker, for sure, and they appear to be built of a kind of die-cast metal. Hmm, very nice. The ear cups frame also appears to be built of a thicker kind of metal, which feels a lot more durable and less likely to bend in your bag. And you've probably noticed this already, the cushions are a lot thicker and more plush than the previous models. Let me see if I can remove them to show you. Yeah, you can remove them. Now obviously the whole thing is upholstered with polyurethane. By the side you have a very convincing looking leather skin surface and in front this is your uh, more common smooth uh, polyurethane surface that you find on sofas. The front plate with the logo is no longer recessed but rather flushed with the rest of the headphones giving it a look that is quite similar in many respects to the Marshall Mid headphones. And of course here you have your iconic and very useful if I might say Brass button which operates your volume controls, music controls, Bluetooth pairing, switching headphones on and off, answering phone calls, and also something new here. It also operates your voice assistant. So when you double click the brass button, it no longer goes into pairing mode like with the other Marshall headphones, but rather calls up your voice assistant such as Siri or Google now. Finally, someone at Marshall is being smart. At 50% volume, I got out about 39 hours of battery, which is impressive, but it didn't have the same 50 hour battery life as the Major 2 Bluetooth, which is kind of surprising. The underside of the headband feels a bit thicker, and it no longer has that printed logo. The logo is now embossed into the leather, and so is the left and right ear cup indicator. Now if you recall, they used to be embossed into a brass piece, but now they are embossed directly into the leather headband. Now there's something I realized about this new headband design. Let me show you. Okay, so let's extend this. Okay, as before, you can do that. I realized that when I put it on, the headband doesn't really bend that much. It is this part here which bends the most. So this leaves the headband in a sort of hourglass shape. So when I wore them for the first couple of hours, I actually felt they, they were pretty comfortable because of the plush cushions and all that. But after a few hours, I actually felt this part here clamping against the side of my head too much. So it becomes pretty uncomfortable. As a result, I will recommend taking a break every couple of hours for this very reason. So yes, although the clamping force is not as tight as the Major 2 Bluetooth, I feel that the headband design is not so perfect yet. Like maybe they could have made the, the hinge a little bit broader, maybe covering a little bit more space at the side so that when you pull the ear cups apart, the headband bends along with it and this should make for a more comfortable wearing experience. On the right ear cup, you have a micro USB port for charging and a 3.5mm jack. Now, this jack has a dual purpose. You can use it to connect the headphones to your phone or to a music player or connect the headphones to another pair of headphones to share your music. You can also connect the headphones to a speaker system to use the headphones as a sort of Bluetooth receiver 
which is pretty cool in my opinion. But it's something you can do with other Marshall Bluetooth headphones as well. Call quality in general was quite good, but in noisy places, I noticed that I needed to raise the volume a little bit more on the major 3 Bluetooth. So what do they sound like? This is probably one of the main reasons why you clicked on this video. So I'm going to tell you what I think of the sound quality. Now if I were to compare them to the previous model, the major 2 Bluetooth, the very first difference that stands out is that they don't have as much bass in the upper bass frequencies. And there are some pros and cons to that, the cons obviously being that if you are a bass head, you probably prefer the sound quality of the major 2 Bluetooth as compared to the major 3. Like if you're a big fan of 80s rock music, then you will notice that they don't convey as much excitement and energy into uh, bass guitars or percussion instruments. But for some people, this can also be a clear benefit like if you're someone who appreciates uh, vocals, music and jazz or R&B, or if you're like me, sometimes I like to enjoy some uh, purely instrumental music with no vocals in the background, they tend to sound a lot cleaner and more detailed in the mid registers compared to the major 2 Bluetooth. Like they always say in audio, one man's bread is another man's poison. Now I'm someone who enjoys watching videos, especially on YouTube, and this is where the major 3 Bluetooth did not disappoint. There was clarity and a lot of detail in my videos, and vocals sounded great too. And to top it all off, there wasn't any AV syncing issues. That is so awesome. And also they do sound a little bit brighter in the upper register, so I feel that Overall, its sound quality is quite close, in fact closer to the mid Bluetooth as compared to the Major 2 Bluetooth. But some of you requested a comparison video, so I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to compare the sound of the Major 3 Bluetooth to the mid and monitor Bluetooth headphones and we'll see where this leads us, okay? So to recap, the Major 3 Bluetooth retails for $289 Singapore dollars, the mid Bluetooth $329 Singapore dollars and the Monitor Bluetooth $399 Singapore dollars. I've also included US pricing as per Marshall's website in case you're living in the States. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so I've paired all of them up to my iPhone 6 Plus. I'm going to play one song between them so that I can gauge the differences in sound quality. Brian Adams' Heaven seems like a great choice. So I'm going to play that. Okay. Major 3 Bluetooth. It's like 60% volume. Clear vocals, and yes, it's not as bassy as the Major 2 Bluetooth, but it still sounds great. It sounds very clean. Okay, I'm gonna play the same uh, portion on this one. Okay, let's try. Now, it's time for the mid to show its stuff. I got a really big head, so I have to extend it all the way. Okay, I must say that the mid has a tighter clamp as compared to the Major 3 Bluetooth. So I would say that the clamp is like maybe 20% tighter, but still a little bit gentler than the Major 2 Bluetooth. Yeah. Okay, from the get-go, I can already feel that this has a more uh, heavy upper bass frequency performance compared to the Major 3 Bluetooth. Hmm, okay. Maybe a little bit louder too. Let me switch back to the Major 3 Bluetooth, okay. So upper bass frequency is definitely heavier, it's got more energy. Major 3 Bluetooth. Okay. I'm just gonna play the same song again. Maybe like 5% softer than the mid. Let's try the mid again. Yeah, no doubt. The mid Bluetooth has better energy and excitement compared to the Major 3 Bluetooth. But I will say this, the Major 3 Bluetooth does have a more relaxed uh, and uh, I would say cleaner sound because it's not so pronounced in the upper bass frequencies and it also has slightly better track separation as compared to the mid bluetooth but I kind of prefer the sound quality of the mid bluetooth a little bit better so now I'm going to switch over to the monitor bluetooth and we'll see how that performs against this and this okay yeah the monitor bluetooth has a more gentle clamp compared to the mid so in terms of clamping pressure, this has the loosest clamp, this has the tightest clamp, and this is somewhere in between. Yeah, okay, so the mid Bluetooth has a more energetic bass, upper bass frequency uh, performance compared to the monitor Bluetooth as well. But the monitor Bluetooth beats the both of them in terms of an open, airy sound. And this has also the best track separation, like 
I would rate this even higher than the major 3 Bluetooth in terms of thread separation. The mid Bluetooth actually sounds more tensed up as compared to the uh, relaxed and loosened up sound quality of the monitor Bluetooth and the major 3 Bluetooth. But the monitor Bluetooth has the best sound staging and music sounds a lot more airy on this as well. Okay, so that was my take of uh, these three headphones. I'm not saying that one is better than the other. I'm not saying also that this, because this has the lowest price point among all of them, so it follows that the others are better than this one. Not at all, because it all boils down to your uh, preference in music, your preference in sound. So if you're someone who likes an extra level of kick and energy in your music, then I will recommend the mid Bluetooth, because this is gonna give you the best kick of them all. Guaranteed. If you're someone who is more fussy about sound quality in general, you want better track separation, better sound staging, open airy sound quality, then the Marshall Monitor Bluetooth is really for you. The Major 3 Bluetooth is great for a lot of situations. Yes, it may not have the energetic bass of the mid Bluetooth or the open spacious sound of the Monitor Bluetooth, but you will get a clean detailed sound quality and great dynamic range. Perfect if you're someone who is more casual about your sound quality, you just, want, you just want something nice to listen to for your music and for your videos. So that was my take of the Marshall Major 3 Bluetooth headphones. I hope this information was helpful and I apologize if this video was a little bit too draggy for you because I do tend to squeeze a lot of nitty gritty information into one single video. <laughs> So yeah, so if you have any questions or you would like me to review some other product, it may not just be headphones, it could be, I don't know, cameras or smartphones because I'm also trying to branch out into other tech genres. So just tell me in the comment section below what you would like me to review. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to watch more of such videos from me, hit subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell to join my notification squad because I upload every week and you don't want to miss another video. And if you'd like to help me keep this channel going by making a small, non-obligatory contribution of $1 or $3, you can become my patron on Patreon. That's right, every single contribution you make on Patreon will go a long way towards helping me keep this channel going. Thanks again for subscribing, my name is Aaron and face pump out!